During Tyler Perry's inauguration into the Hall of Fame, Idris Elba exposed how his productions affected black actors claiming he had a bone to pick with Tyler. I'm just going to start with a couple of bones I have to pick with you. Number one, in 2007 you cast me as Monty in Daddy's Little Girls. Idris mentioned that Tyler Perry's production was changing the way men, especially black men, were being portrayed in the media. Because of that role, it changed not only my career, but it also changed the way I believe that people cast black men. In support of Idris's observation, a close associate of Perry claimed that Perry's production had a tendency to emasculate black men due to the fact that he himself might be gay. Tyler made it clear that he said, look, no one can know that I'm gay. And I'm thinking, what? Are you looking around? Did you see all these sissies you hanging around at this table? Nobody can know that you're gay. And you he also alleged that from the very beginning of Tyler's career, he was working with black gay men. And that's why men working with Tyler end up taking on roles that force them to act out of their comfort zone. Perry helped him with his plays. I would say 90, 85 to 90 percent of the guys that supported Tyler Perry when he first started were all black gay men. So what did Idra Elba expose about the nasty price black actors pay for working with Tyler Perry? Let's get into it. So when Tyler Perry was getting his star at the Hall of Fame, Idris Elba, who has worked with Tyler before, gave a speech where he complimented the Medea actor on how his production changed the way black men were being viewed in the industry, and his comments were met with conflicting opinions by the public. There is no question that Tyler Perry is a prominent player in the entertainment industry who worked his way to the top after taking the Atlanta theater community by storm and becoming a box office champ with his Medea series and gospel-based films. He gave audiences something Hollywood had largely ignored, stories and characters aimed at the life experiences of the black community. While some observers inside and outside the African-American creative circle praised him for giving an opportunity to stories and experiences of the black, some claimed the sight of black male performers in drag also carried troubling cultural baggage. They contended that the caricatures were no laughing matter and jeopardized the image of African-American masculinity. Todd Boyd, a professor of critical studies at the University of Southern California's School of Cinematic Arts, said the roles humiliate and emasculate black men. It renders them less than powerful. Back in 2022, Tyler Perry defended some of his most popular films against accusations that they feed into harmful stereotypes. Perry, who appeared on Chris Wallace's CNN and HBO Max series, Who's Talking to Chris Wallace, stood by his hit film franchise, which includes 12 movies in total. During his conversation with Perry on the particular CNN episode, Wallace told his guest, over the years, there have been a number of people who say that you're playing with negative stereotypes of black men and black women. The host specifically mentioned Spike Lee's 2009 comments blasting the Medea films as buffoonery and insisting that we can do better than films like Perry's. Emasculating black men, I've heard it all, Perry told Wallace, adding, there's a certain part of our society, especially black people, in the culture, that they look down on certain things within the culture. For me, I love the movies that I've done because they are the people that I grew up with, that I represent, he continued. So when someone says, you're hearkening back to a point in our life that we don't want to talk about or we don't want the world to see, you're dismissing the stories of millions and millions of black people. And that's why I think it's been so successful because it resonates with many of us who know these women and these experiences and Uncle Joe and so on and so forth. The filmmaker insisted he isn't disrespecting anyone in his films. In fact, he's hoping to do the opposite, Perry said. What is important to me is that I'm honoring the people that came up and taught and made me who I am. The first Medea film, Diary of a Mad Black Woman, was released in 2005 and has spawned over a dozen spin-off films. The most recent, A Medea Homecoming, premiered on Netflix earlier this year. His Medea films have received the most love and also the most controversies with comedians mocking the character claiming that Medea was no old woman, but rather a man playing a woman. Do you know who Medea is, sir? That's a nigga in that dress, sir. That's not nobody's grandma. With the fact that most roles given to black men by Tyler are usually stereotyped females or cross-dressers, one of his close associates spoke up and alleged that Tyler Perry is actually gay, and that's why he ends up putting other black men into those roles. He even claimed that at the beginning of his career, Tyler used to perform at gay events but had to cut back on associating with that part of himself based on the fact that he had built his entire brand on the black church. Tyler made it clear that he said, look, no one can know that I'm gay, and I'm thinking, 
what are you looking around? Did you see all these sissies you hanging around at this table? Nobody can know that you're gay. Several other older gay men have also told stories of hanging out with Tyler Perry in gay clubs back in the day. Most of them really have no real reason to fabricate anything or lie, and another more notable name to add to that list of people who remember hanging out with Tyler Perry in the gay club is radio host and comedian Miss Sophia. Miss Sophia not only talked about how Tyler Perry used to frequent the club she worked at, but she also told a very interesting story about about how Tyler Perry stole her likeness and her material and called it Medea. But after the show, Tyler Perry would always come up and tell me, you know you crazy, you know you stupid, and you know I'ma put such and such, such you said in the show. Miss Sophia explained how Tyler frequented the club, made her empty promises, and moreover stole her material. Sophia said Medea didn't come into existence until 2000 and she has been around for over 20 years. This isn't the first time someone accused Tyler for stealing content or disregarding his employees and there have been numerous controversies of Tyler abandoning his employees. After striking it big at the box office, Perry set his sights on television, where he found success with the hit sitcom House of Pain. But just as Perry was preparing to sign a lucrative syndication deal and launch the spin-off Meet the Browns, Deadline dropped the surprising news that he fired four writers after they requested union contracts. The Writers Guild of America stepped in and charged Perry's production company with unfair labor practice and bargaining in bad faith. It was not a good look. I feel like I was slapped in the face like we were used, writer Terry Brown Jackson told Deadline. We were good enough to create over a hundred episodes, but now when it comes to reaping the benefits of the show being syndicated and having other spin-offs from it, he decides to let us go unless we accept a horrible offer. Kelly Griffin, the head writer for House of Pain, said she wasn't going down without a fight. Well, I'd like to see something positive come out of this for us. If this fight helps future black writers get what they deserve, that's a good thing. As for Perry learning his lesson, he did make a change to the writer's room for his future shows, by not having one. Perry told ABC News he writes everything himself now. Despite others' negative perspective on Perry and his films, his Boo 2 A Medea Halloween film debuted at number one and was a sequel to last year's Boo A Medea Halloween, which also topped the box office and collected close to $75 million. Perry's detractors have long labeled Medea a cartoonish and outrageous stereotype, but the writer-producer-director points to his massive legion of fans, who continue to flock to movies and plays in which he portrays the character. He believes they feel a deep connection to Medea, who also helps deliver Perry's message of family, love, and faith. Medea got her start in front of black people, Perry said. I own the character, no one told me to do it. People relate to the realness of the character. She's not politically correct. It's like a member of your family. It's comedy. It's what's needed now. Some are requesting him to make movies that break black men, stereotype, and actually uplifts black men image instead of emasculating men and insulting women in the process. A fan on X previously Twitter said, Lee Daniels and Tyler Perry profits off the images, films, emasculating black men. It's an attack on their presence, mental, and their strength. I'm tired of seeing battered black women who sing a rendition of Father Do You Hear Me. It's played out and destructive, divisive as hell. Another said, it's a pattern with Tyler Perry movies, shows, etc. He portrays black women as sneaky she-devils, insulting, overbearing, emasculating to black men or stereotypical buffoons. Of course, there will be those who disagree. That's what Twitter is, a bunch of opinions. So what's your take on Tyler Perry and his movies? Tell us in the comment section. Anyway, this video is based on speculation and opinions, and if you enjoyed this content, remember to hit that like button and subscribe for more exciting updates. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.